and welcome back to SummerSlam Time for part two. Go! I think you also forgot your paper super too. I guess my paper should be in here too. Oh, yeah, that's what you said. Don't listen to me. Right. World War 4 1996. Well, anyway, post match, the cage match, excellent match, A. Plus. Uh, post match, Nightheart Chug, Davy Boy, over the railing uh, with uh, Diana. Which wasn't apparent, which apparently wasn't a planned spot. If I actually watch it. Uh, which apparently wasn't a planned spot, but it was just really Diana and Davy Boy trying to, I don't, I don't know, put Diana in a bigger spotlight. There's uh, also a role to Diana in a bigger spotlight. But anyway, I want to break at Matt, Matt at them for that. Uh, they, they both bumped over the railing, Nightheart went after Brad at ringside, and then rolled Brett into the cage along with Ellen. Nightheart locked the cage door, the Hart brothers were outside the ring trying to get in with Ellen and Nightheart knocking it down. If this sounds very NWA, it, it really is. And that's, that's, the, that's the way it kind of looked. I believe. About a year before he came into the company. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying. Uh, Smith tried to get in two. Apparently that warranted it to a sentence. Owen um, kept on knocking guys off the cage while Lawler said this is the greatest thing ever. Uh, Bulldog went back up again, punched Owen several times and knocked him down. Owen ended up climbing out along, along with Nightheart to avoid getting attacked while the other brothers checked on Brett in the ring. Uh, in the backstage area, Owen and Knight are there. Owen oh, complained about how everybody has been against him. Knight Hart threatened Fred, Owen. Owen oh, then said they were going to celebrate the victory. Uh, yeah, that was supposed to be the end of the I'm not sure you should have done it for now. Especially if it was supposed to be the last match. But whatever. We, we ended up with more hard versus hard, so. Uh, up next is uh, they had the video package for Undertaker versus Undertaker. Uh, yes, that yes that was a mistake. It's Undertaker versus Undertaker. Which is it? Very few. Uh, Undertaker, Undertaker and after the Royal Rumble was put in a casket by Yokozuna and friends, and was on WWE TV for about nine months. Uh, where he actually missed WrestleMania 10 as well, I, I believe we'll get into it. Yeah. I believe that's what it was for. Uh, the whole story is that Ted DiBiase brought in a fake Undertaker, and then Paul Barrow realized it's a fake Undertaker, or Underfaker, if you will. So he, so here's the confrontation with Paul Barrow bringing him back the real Undertaker. Uh, Ted DiBiase made his entrance, introduced with the, with the Undertaker. Uh, Paul Bear made his entrance with the one, the only, the Undertaker. According to announcer Howard Finkel. Uh, Paul Bear had some druids bring out, bring out a casket that they were, that they brought some work right. When the casket opened, Bear brought out a big ass golden urn. With Waller saying he doesn't have an Undertaker, the lights went out, Bear opened the urn. As the light came out of the urn, they used the same exact urn, almost. Like, uh, 17 years later? And, and the Hell of with came. Uh, Bear opened the urn, the light came out, and the real Undertaker appeared for the match. Uh, and apparently the fake Undertaker is Ryan Lee, who is actually a disciple Chains. of Apocalypse Chains. And uh, as well, the interests go, uh, also, apparently Undertaker Nina Light, so what the fuck? As uh, the storyline goes, uh, uh, a guy really has to be a fake Undertaker. What the fuck? And the match was boring as fuck. Yes, it was boring as fuck. Uh, Undertaker, Undertaker selling his own offense is weird. 
I was going to uh, look like we were teamed up since then. Okay, Undertaker selling his own offense from an Undertaker clone is weird. I don't like it. Who can who can't really do it as good as he does. Uh made a Soul Taker first one, by the way. Yeah. They used to be friends, not the more. Yes, Kate for Yeah. Uh it it is really weird that I'm someone who's topping Undertaker's offense so partly against the Undertaker. Undertaker has to sell it just as good as his opponent can do. Um, but yeah, the match was boring, it was slow paced, uh, and Undertaker had to sell his own offense from someone who can't do it as good. Uh, yeah, the match is an F. Uh, Undertaker wins with the tombstone. And then, uh, yeah, DBS just walks away, and Undertaker celebrates the end. But it's not the end. Yeah, it is. It's not the end of the show. Uh, DiBiase ran away while the Druids came back. The Taker put Faker in a casket on right side, and that was the end of him. Uh, Randy Savage spoke about how the WF never ceased to amaze him as the Taker and Paul Bear left. By the way, this that would in fact would be Macho Man Randy Savage's last appearance on a WWE pay-per-view. Nope. Actually, would in fact be gone out of the company by the first week of November. That year. That feels so special worldwide that night. And Vince Bunch is out of the world yeah. that night for the left. Exactly. Uh, then we, we get a shot backstage with Nielsen and Kennedy. They, op they open the casket to have nothing inside it. The other faker is gone. And then Kennedy pointed out a case and told Leslie Nielsen that the case was closed and that the show was over. The iconic thing. Uh, so. Funny enough, the post, uh, the post match actually almost had a different ending. I actually learned this from Bump Culture that apparently the ending was supposed to be some sort of like light show going on, like flipping and flashing. And apparently, the two Undertakers were supposed to be standing in the ring, and then the lights would go off really quick, and then there would be one Undertaker. That probably will put lighter for you more time. <laughs> There'd be one. There would be one Undertaker. So like, the real Undertaker absorbed the Undertaker. Or a gray Undertaker. So since they went with the bar ending. Yes, they did. Ah! <laughs> uh, so, throughout all this mess, there was actually some good that came out of it. Uh, Brian Lee had to uh, work at looking like Undertaker, how, how to wrestle like him, how to move like him, how to perform his moves. And the guy he worked with actually got a full-time job off of being seen helping this guy, uh, and it ended up being just incredible, oh. who would become Alvin Montoya. So, uh, well, at least some good came out of that for somebody. Uh, I want to take but the soft. overall show is, since the main event is an F, the overall I'm giving, I have to give an F, just as my personal rule. Uh, there was great and good with this, but there was also bad and cringy as well. Uh, the show, and the show just ended on a huge flop. Uh, the match was boring, the storyline was long, drawn out, and kind of, and kind of very stupid. Uh, and just, uh, and just as a reminder, more or less a reasoning for why I felt it came to Uh, it's really based on the whole overall package of the entire show. Uh, so it's more of a great against the company or whoever booked the show. Than it is the individual workers on the show. The individual workers already get their grade through the match, but as a whole, on the show, it's the entire company that more or less wants to make some decisions. So, there you go, that's SummerSlam 1994 for you. That, that show is a worse, I think. Ah, uh, or say, a say. The main message is deep. Uh, but now, 
I don't need no intro because I'm special. I'm going to this in the video. Uh, World War III, 1996. Some place on November 24th, 1996. At the Norfolk School. The Norfolk for Pinion and Tennis for 10 minutes, 3 on 14 commentators. Dusty Rose, Tony Shavai, and Bobby Keaton. And what, we're doing the three lane battle royal with the winner getting the tail shot just after starting. The entire roster is doing this pretty much plus a ton of guys I know on TV at yeah, all. Cool. Uh, we also have a man versus woman match and Chris and Jericho versus the referee. Yeah, you, you can really tell us what there was in the show. So let's get to it. And the open video is just a basic rundown of the card tonight. Uh, they now just wonder why Bischoff is trying to slow down the contract sign between Hogan and Piper. Someone tells it doesn't want to dominate the conversation. So. Uh, we did things all with the J Crown Championship. Also, the Dragon versus Ray Mysterio. Uh, now, the J Crown was that was a collection of eight cruiserweight titles from around the world. One of which being the WWF Light Heavyweight title, which was active since the 80s. And only defended in Japan and Mexico, also including this IWGP Junior Hardweight. By the way, WWF actually didn't know right. that their light heavyweight title was actually on WCW. Yeah. Right. So therefore, their title is being defended here on those same pay-per-views. They also gave us this... I don't even think WCW They also gave us this great image. That's also a drawing with the eight championships. With the beam saying, Ability, realize right now that you would never be this good. Ah! Uh, Seriously, how sweet does that look? There, there's a pile of championships in his in the quarter. How else is that? I guess so many belts just piles them up. And kind of like uh, Aries with being the belt collector right now. Yeah. So uh, apparently, Bischoff is more than AWL by this point. So what is that? Uh, we start off a map based smash, which is kind of odd, but it can work. Uh, how weird is it for the ring to become a two time world, two or three time world champion at this point? Uh, now they crack y'all. And get a nice ovation for them. So the fans always appreciate the wrestle. And this is an exception. Uh, Dragon is dominating here, which makes sense as he's pushed. As he wrote a different kind of curves way that can mix up incredibly well. He is, sounds like he's on speed here, as he's told us in the face. <laughs> uh, Dragon hits a power bomb, but picks right up again, throws it backwards into a hot shot. That was nice. We go way old school with Giant Slays. So, uh, someone really needs to look at Bobby's Bonner. They're always on the point. They're always blinking. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the crowd loves Roy here. Uh, pay no attention to that though. He's a small guy of Mexican descent and can't ever be anything. Uh, he can't be marketable with a mask on. Uh, this is basically Dragon does a big move and Ray is very time. Ray could sell a few others. So this is certainly good. I I never got into Lord of the Rings at these shows. This is an ammo session, how many rings there are and how that works. And there's no way today for this match either, so which is a commentary more annoying than helpful. Uh, Ray kind of boshes some stuff, but nothing too bad. And he springboards such that focus to a Ray, and he can move back in the day. Uh, after they crank up again, Ray goes to the West Coast Pop, but Dragon counts into a slew shot power bomb to retain the pile of belts. They, they send the link goes next. Uh, there's a salad again, and one more time, and one more time to cruise away some table for what could be a problem she's show. Uh, Dragon was definitely a different kind of cruise weight. Back then, he used more power and lever stuff right around in the high flying. And worked very well. He, he and Malika have some regular stuff too. Come out. That we'll have to look at this soon. Soon I'll uh, play go match here and A plus match it. Uh, there's a new WCW.com. Because this is 1996, so I won't expect it. Uh, Mark, Mark Madden is the commentator person here. Uh, DDP look a, a light thing more traditional than wood. It's been recruited by NWO. He would never say yes to remain one of the few heroes in those same fans' eyes. He denies the session of Mitchell and other than being his neighbor and says he'll win the battle royal with a bang. Chris Jericho versus Nick Patrick. Uh, Patrick has been an evil referee to screw Jericho over a few times and it's really right inside. Jericho has Tay Long as his manager, which didn't last long. He also has to have one arm tied behind his back. We hear about Nick Patrick's wrestling career, which also didn't last long. Uh, it's the left arm here, so this should be Domus. Patrick cuts a short pro when we find out why he's our free. Patrick is in a sleeveless shirt and ends in an, um, he's in an NWA here, so 
Bill's trying to memory. It's from one arm patch up once a test drive. The whole, that whole wrestling background falls apart pretty quickly around his old jerk out, which was all clinical one arm. His old juggers are done for. Jugger misses the clothesline into the post, though, and Patrick takes over for a bit. Since his offense does nothing to know, we're kind of just waste time here, and Jugger challenges the air. So Michael's first super kick to end it. This was, the fir- this was actually the first pinfall loss for the NWL on pay per view. And it was done by Nick Patrick. Four Nick months- Patrick took the fall. Four months after they did you. I imagine be bored from a wrestle standpoint. But they came off with some fairly creative spots. Um, to, uh, what's the one over? Club Patrick in some office, and uh, it was just kind of pointless because there was no challenge on Open Jerry, and it just kind of fell flat. It could have been far worse, though. I think it was match you both, and you really know someone. You were like, hey, bye, though. I'm all back. Oh, God. Uh, Colonel Parker and the Juice, it wasn't? Yeah. Uh, I gave it a B plus for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the match was pretty really good. Uh, Ford comes out for an interview. He's hurt here, so he's off the card. Even with his arm in his sleeve, the guy looks like a million bucks. On. Uh, he pulls out a ton of guys that have this is not about them selling, so not the NWO. He guarantees that NWO will lose, and it stops the dance in between. Uh, that was awesome. Oh, the old guys can talk. Uh, Giant versus Chet Chart. This was just before last month, but since he was hurt then too, I uh, only have it. They brought Jerry in, but he couldn't do a thing with Giant at that hit room. So Giant stole the US title off the Flair, who was champion, but had shut him for lack of defenses in 30 days. Uh, Jerry's booted out of the building, this might be the first pick to fight Giant. Jerry's in Brian, and he didn't get chosen last month. And that's his big claim to fame at the moment. Uh, the crowd's all over Jerry here and Lally Chair and Giant. We hear about how Hogan got Giant to end the video by promising more movie parts, etc. And sure enough, Giant was in the movie Jingle All One, which was in theaters the weekend of the show. Uh, Sting is up in the rafters, and the show pretty much stops dead because of it. He comes out of the steps, and it's hard to tell if it's the real one or not. Giant misses the Vader bomb, and Jarrett takes down on Chris Five. That might be a real sink. He takes Jarrett out while Giant's on the floor, and chokes Len, ends it, where Chris Paul has things to on our air now. Which won't be officially answered until that March. Uh, apparently, it was much better than their match to lay stuff as Jared didn't try to shram here. And it looked like it was freaking more. Also, Giant sold more of his stuff and looked a lot better in the front, too. Now, this is just a pull in a huge sting chest game. That would work well, so that would do his job. Uh, D. Plus. Piper comes out with a contract in his hand. Bobby suggested that Piper is a bigger movie star than Hogan. Uh, we definitely do this. <laughs> uh, Bischoff, Vincent, DiBiase come out and say it's Hogan. The next night, Bischoff will say, you join us or have a contract for you, which went nowhere, but it got back when you joined. Uh, Bischoff has power turn for Hogan, so he can sign for Hogan. And a great big, and a great bit of continuity, Piper shoves Vincent aside and tells him that he told Vincent how to fight. Piper trained Vincent, Virgil and Case said, doesn't ring a bell. To fight for his first match back in 1991. Yeah, that's, yeah, that is. Uh, Piper says he can wear a leather jacket because he's tough enough. To unlike Bischoff, Piper really does come on with a tough guy here, and this really did feel big. The problem was he actually had to wrestle. That's funny. Piper more or less says he doesn't care about counting BQ, like just win. And here's Hogan, Liz, Hold, Nash, Six, and Giant. Bobby thinks Piper's outnumbered. I wonder if it was the nine one odds. That may think that. Uh, Hogan gets on a mic and lifts Piper's skirt. That's his word, showing the scarf Piper had from him. Placement. Why not just hold a big sign under her head saying, old guys? Uh, <laughs> Hogan signs the contract, which Piper brought him. The, the funny thing is, I think Hogan now is now just completely metal yes. from the waist down. Yeah. Uh, for no reason, this match is not title. And when Piper won't lose sleeper, he didn't win the title. To say the phase of place would be understatement. Uh, Piper jumps on Hogan, gets caught, uh, but gets caught, Hogan gets a cheer, and he's the weakest cheer shot ever to the star. Uh, good to see the NWO is always take, only taking 10 minutes in a second. Uh, up next, the amazing fresh Canadians versus Spawn with me. The Canadians are more commonly known as the Quebecers in the WWF. They're matched by Colonel Parker and a Heat by Sherry. In the Heat win, there's a match between the managers. Someone tells me this isn't going to be that good. 
Jacques who was on Jacques who was on Newborn Rising that came from in 2000 uh, oh, wow. Sings the National Anthem of Canada I say sings loosely He and Booker Star who's on Disco Fest To my great shock we talk about Piper and Hope for no matter Parker's dressed up as a French legionnaire now and some hell of a to her He stops on Booker and the comedy is completely potential uh, in the beginning, the sash wasn't particularly terrible, it was just boring. Uh, but then match the pick up. Uh, the Canadians got get to the steps, put them in a the corner, and get a table, lay across the top rope. They put more steps on top of that, and then non Mally Canadian. And then it's all here. So that's the front foot wolf, and Queen Mrs. Sam, Arm Hanger, Brandon Sam. Uh, this thing gonna be interesting in the beginning. Uh, I was trying to figure out why I was watching the Quebecers, and since so one was almost on 27, but whatever. Uh, this was that bad. Uh, so it was decent on levels like it would be. So, so surprising. Uh, no one cared about Point versus Sherry, though, so they went for a reason. Sherry beats up Point for like a minute in her match. Uh, Point was right here close by, not even worth an actual introduction. Uh, don't say these stop hiring production guys on TV, by the way. So clearly, just say someone went from the show, not sure why about them. So, Piper versus Hogan is called a match of the century. No, it's already happened before. And we get a really big promo for Starcade. Someone else might be coming to WCW. I'm not sure who that was, but I'd like to say anyone special. Luger comes in, talks about Stan Kane and a baseball bat. Luger faces he's NWR, but doesn't want to believe it. He had been in the semi Superman push lately, so he was one of the favorites in Battle Royale. But there really wasn't anyone that was clearly not in the way. Cruiser White Tail, Psychosis with people like that. Malenko was just about perfect at this point and will somehow get better next year. Actually win Best Technical Wrestler both in ISIS and I stand for Melser, as well as win the PLI 500. Sorry, number one wrestler year in 1997. Oh wow, I didn't know that. So they were, they were building the Malenko vs. Dragon next month and will more or less be a throwaway match. We saw a lot of technical stuff as we were trying to say. Bobby picks Malenko win the Battle Royal tonight. I'll set the O. I'll set the over on the for that. Ah! They're doing the free broadcast team tonight, so that's just gonna make my head hurt. Uh, Malenko has a lay lock, and the fans look at stuff in the way. It's even more decent stuff. Psychosis falls off the top rope and slams his head into the really. Sissy isn't dead, we can't continue. Uh, Dean goes into his finishing sequence, but the rope breaks the clover leaf. He destroys the name and is completely dominating here. We ignore the over top rope thing again. And Psychosis says it's the top rope flip from the top and hits his head again. Good thing he wears that mask or he'll need to cover up the, the ugly spark. And then again, I've seen psychosis from Malcolm's mask. You probably need the mask all along. Ah! Uh, what? What? It's calm and lovely. Dean takes a run for the top of two. As this kind of pedestrian in the crowd is until it all really. He gets a sweet reversal out of his suplex into a small package. That looked great. A tombstone is a super champion that he rolls him off for the pain. Decent match, but they, they just felt that we're up there. They were kind of all by step compared to the Rain and Ultimo. And it showed that it's, it's definitely good, but there was stuff holding back from being really good. The crowd of Carol for Summer Joyce's eyes, but we're going to go to the Rain Pop, or we're going to be. Tag titles, Nancy Boys versus Al Cyrus versus Faces of Fear. This is the next to the last smash to the car, so old us almost done. A uh, whole match had belts. And come out first for some reason. The faces of fear were good for placeholders and jobbers in this division. They were legit tough. So it's completely believable. The they the next one continue to not be much old. The more famous teams start to whirl before the faces of fear are here. Uh, the outsiders are both jumped by a tag team and breaks out their into a brawl. Nobs and Barbarian starts old officially. They keep the outsiders out as old as they can, which is about a minute and a half. Hole comes in and beats up Barbarian. Barbarian needs to get out because it's WCW. The problem is that no one cares about Barbarian, so they cheer Hole. Uh, we're six minutes into this, and Dusty says it's been 15. <laughs> Basically, it's just a bunch of rolling no particular rhyme or reason. Uh, uh, I love Nash's side slam. The way side box slam. Yeah. Uh, it's just downright elegant. Yeah, that is how we learn to use a lot to describe Kevin Nash, but. <laughs> Uh, no one has any particular advantage, but Ming 
just a suplex a hole for two, and Jimmy freaks. It's absolutely the large time she does the screw How much caffeine do you think he has in one day? The nasty boards are ordained the masters of the clubber. They just stay back and watch the other four fight, which is smart when you think about. This is for like 10 minutes of just random roll. There's no floor, there's not a hole, no one's been any kind of it's some trouble. Ming and Nobs had a whole match at the same time, so they had to fight. Hole lays down for Nash at the same as May. He's sending this, this match a bit longer. A megaphone shot and power bomb on Nobs ends it. Ah, uh, this was a terrible. It runs around 15 minutes, so nothing note happens. Is this sort of all the ending thing for the other? Uh, when well, the faces of fear had the best performance at match though. That's how I'm gonna sign this place. Ah, that was a match, let's see. And now we do the barrel room, so oh yay. Uh, the team announced. The teams of announcers are Today and Dusty, Larry and Larry's the best guy, Lee Marshall, and Tony and Bob. Okay, so before any of you ever complain about raw commentary ever again, this match had six commentators. They all get their taken on the me a thing. Dusty picks Luger or Cody. <laughs> uh, we're worth three. I'll just run down some of these names that are never on board. Arn Anderson, Chris Benoit, A. Guerrero, Scott Hall, Chris Jericho, uh, D. Malenko, Ray Mysterio, Kevin Ash. TP Booker C Some other talented cruiser voice Alex Wright This is a list from Wikipedia and I have all the names so Wait them for anything that were that that's weird Ah uh, the intros take a few minutes and six guys have to come out. One will come out in a few minutes. Jimmy Graffiti. Does anybody know him? Nope. It's Jimmy Del Rey of the Heavenly Bodies. Huh. Okay. Does anybody know Galaxy? No. He's a luchador. <laughs> He's some luchador, okay. Jack Bruce? Nope. He's Buddy Lee Parker. Huh. And Pez Watley. He was a medium deal in 1986 and then the guy. There you go. Benoit's will be up and has black eyes and cuss all over his face. The NWR are all in the same ring. Benoit's saw them fighting for the match officially starts because they always do. Uh, the dungeon and the horse that jump in, here we go. I'm not even going to list off everyone with me here. So if I believe something out, don't be surprised this place. The camera stays up Benoit's saw them for about a minute and a half. Uh, oh great, we're doing a triple spring thing. And you can't see anything. Yep. I can't see anything that's going on, just a whole bunch of movement. I think the Dungeon Doom and the Horse are cool. We looked at the three rings in 15 seconds combined and almost three minutes of Ben Wallace assaulted. The NWS just standing in the corner of Ben Wallace slammed on Marshall and Larry's table. No one knows that yet. All the Dungeon and Horse are out, which is about nine people. Marshall gets dumped out in the big fight, so something is going right tonight at least. Look up huge disaster in the dictionary and he had this match. Uh, Tony Tony Rumble, a career jobber, is one. Once it get down to 10 in each ring, don't break up that ring. The park is gone as a sequel of Peg. Norton is one of Pez Wally is two. I spent a lot of that in this match. The elimination start picking up as three no names going out in a row. We get rid of jobbers for the most part here, which is good. Joe Gomez is out. Oh, oh man. He was my pick. Was he? Yep. All the announced teams run down the remaining guys, and I don't even bother paying attention. Uh, everybody name is Sonic. Uh, giant and a roadblock, and if I, an incredibly fat guy, go ahead. Guess who wins? JL is out. That's Joey Lynn. And we really need to get this down to one run for the sake of sanity. Everyone, everybody goes in their big Ron stud. Ron, not John. And there about dozen. No relation, I'm guessing. And there about dozen splashes. No one actually tries to pump up. I don't know what Paul's on, but we're told he has to be for an outburst. 
both Canadians and Duggan are out. A eliminates himself with a launch into Regal. Uh, Bagwell's guys were getting some bigger names going. He and Riggs fight on the floor and they were split to barn. Dave Taylor and Wolsh are gone. There are nine left in ring three, so that should be broken up. Scott Steiner is out. There are eight in the ring one and eight in ring one and nine in ring two. Hoovy is out. More version of ring two, thank goodness. Wait, is A out? No, we weren't sure if Eddie was out or not, even though he went on the top rope. Everyone's in the same ring, so they keep up with the two cameras. Let's go to one damn camera. Jack Boot is out. You can't see anything. And it's really complicated because getting more than one angle at the same time is just really confusing. Luger tries to get Giant out, but the power of fat stops him. Malik goes out, and so is Sergeant Craig Pittman and Booker. We're still on three cameras because they're so stupid. This guy is following up. Bug Hell Spuck is gone. I love the seven people are left. Boy, what a basic camera shot. I'll we'll have to do that. A bunch of people go out quickly, including Dragon. Tony says there are 13 left. Jeff is going out, so I just follow the thing. Joseph Ferris to pay the bomb camera goes with a single shot. Ice Train's out. Okay, everyone in circle. And finally, we get to one camera. 20 minutes into the freaking match. We have six Paul, Nash, Giant, DP, Jarrett, Luger, Ray, Regal, and A left. Either A and Regal went over the top rope earlier. Ah, they are left in the final 10. <laughs> Oh, by the way, Ray was eliminated in ring six. Ah, uh, when we get to him. Ah, uh, he's eliminated in ring six. Yeah, A was in the final ten last year, too, in ring five. A is out, and then Ray goes in Nash. Giant literally throws Ray out in ring six with one hand. Jared goes out, and we have seven left. DDP takes us to six. Regal, Luger, four NWO guys take that. Luger versus NWO. Giant misses in charge and winds up on the ropes, so Luger racks him. Hole goes out, there goes six, like an idiot, he racks an axe. And Giant dumps them both to win. Bobby and Tony says it's the best Battle Royal ever. Giant will get thrown out of NWO for asking for a title shot. He will get a sold out, the first NWO pay per view, which I believe I over reviewed for guys back in yes. January. Mm -hmm. uh, the Heels post and the show. Uh, this wasn't very good. The camera work killed it in the end. For at least five minutes, we were all one ring and you couldn't see anything at all. These matches were never really very good at all, and this is the exception. They're just big messes the entire time, and nothing really ever came from it. When you have certain jobbers, it makes you wonder what the point is to have in this. Man, you cut the thing down to like 45 or even 40, and this is way better. Still, though, the end of the other way was just too good, but again, this is the episode you should have got. Uh, F for the match. Um, it's a one match show because of the name of the show, F. Uh, this wasn't very good. Some okay stuff on it. Uh, Ryan vs. Dragon. Will be my recommendation. And Dina Psychosis of Heartbeat and Amazing Franks today is on me. Uh, I'm next to play back twice at sea. Let's see that.